McFall Farms. I'm Bo McFall. For those of you who are regular subscribers, welcome back. For those of you who are here for the first time, we're glad you're here. Hope that you'll consider subscribing. Today, we are going to discuss and show how to hook up an electric fence charger and the grounding system to go with it. Uh, in a previous video, I'll leave some links below, maybe a card up above. Uh, we've showed you how to install high tensile fence wire. And now we're going to tie that system together and make it active. So let's get right to it. That's a lot of deer poop. That's a lot of deer poop? I think that's goat poop. <laughs> I don't have any deers out here that I raise. But there probably is some deer poop though. Nasty. Nasty, um... Nasty what? Put a nasty bucket on your head? <laughs> First thing we've got to do is run the main line down the top of the T-post you see in the background going all the way down. Those are going back up to the wooden fence in the front and we'll run a jumper off of that main drop uh, to the four wire high tensile we ran previously. It's a card up above there and link it below. Uh, and so we're going to get that done. The first thing we've done is we've set up our spinning jenny on the other end so we can pull our wire. And again, that's in a previous video. I'm not going to bore you with that. So I'm going to pull that real quick and then I'm going to show you how to hook this charger up. We are going to be using this as a Reba 10 mile fence charger. Something I already previously had that I picked up years ago at a yard sale, brand new in the box for about $20. Uh, steal of a deal. And now I'm going to put it to work. And we're also going to be using, I purchased a grounding kit a complete kit comes with three six foot ground rods 50 foot ground wire and the connection lugs to connect it together so we're going to install that i will leave some affiliate links in the description below for any of the materials and accessories we're using today okay so we've got the charger mounted it's a 10 mile zarebe or zariba charger ac version and these also come in a solar version as well as a DC version where you can hook them to a car battery. We set our ground rods per manufacturer recommendation. See the tape measure there. We've got ground rods set 10 feet apart, a total of three. We're fixing to drive those, and once we get those drove, we'll run the uh, ground wire from the box and loop it through to the ground rods. We'll get these rods drove into the ground using that post driver. There's other ways to do it, but I found this works pretty easy. drop line run down tied in to this post just above the fence charger panel so we run that all the way down to the front through those yellow insulators you see on the T post now we got to go up here to the corner and tie in the main cable oh she's curious already she's gonna get the shock of her life tie in the main cable to the four wires we've got running down the front fence so we're gonna show you how to tie that in we're gonna tie that in using this underground aluminum cable. It's pre-insulated, so we just have to trim it. That way if it comes in contact with anything, it won't ground out. So that's what we'll be using to make those jump splices. All right, before we can hook in the panel itself and make these live, we've got to hook the jump splices into the main cable that's feeding the electricity to the four wires we ran on our wooden fence here in the front that you can see behind me. I'll leave a card up above for the video on running high tensile wire, but let me show you this corner where we got to hook up these jump splices. If you remember from the previous video on running the high tensile wire, which I left a card above for, we left extra crimp sleeves that are loose on the wire, and those are to be able to run our jump lines from here to this top run, and then we'll jump from the top run to any run that's electrified, which we're going to electrify all four of these, so we have to make jump wires to go from each one. 
all the way down. That's what we left those extra connectors on there. They do make a crimp connector. If the event you leave one off, that hooks over and crimps down. So it's not the end of the world. But uh, I tried to add a few extras where I could. So I'm gonna make these jump splices real quick out of the underground aluminum cable that's already pre-insulated. And then we'll use those, get those all tied in. And then we'll show you how to tie in the main electric fence wire box. So this is the completed product with the jump wire ran from the main electric line coming in from the panel or from the electric fence charger box down here. We'll jump off of that over to our four wires and then we run a jumper from each one consecutively all the way down to the bottom and turn electrifying all four. Uh, one key component that we are going to install is a electric fence in use sign on the front of the fence since this is road facing I don't want anybody inadvertently getting shocked if you're like me part of me says leave it off nobody should be climbing my fence anyway however the other part of me says lawsuit in the works so we've got our jump wire tied into the main wire going to the front fence that jumper wire comes back around to the positive side or the fence side of the charging box. Ground wire is hooked up. Goes down to the first ground rod through the clamp. Follows down that wire to the second ground rod looped through that grounding clamp. And all the way back over to the third and final ground rod looped through there. Before we energize the fence, we want to double check all our connections check to make sure nothing's on the fence wire on the high tensile run down the front that everything's secure and as it should be and then our last and final thing we'll do is plug in the charger uh, once we get the charger plugged in we'll check the fence for its voltage output uh, do not grab hold of it unless you just like grabbing hold of things that will electrify you I would recommend getting you a fence tester they're not very expensive so that you can test the voltage on the fence that is how we install an electric fence charger. We'd love to see your comments below, maybe on how you do things, if you do things a little different. Love it if you consider subscribing, following us for other future videos. I'll leave a card over here uh, that you can click on with a playlist to install a high tensile fence, uh, assembling a spinning jenny, how to use that, as well as hooking this box up. So we've got a playlist all concerning high tensile. We'd love it if you take a look at that. Thanks for watching McFall Farms. See you on the next one.